Hello, so today we're gonna um, save our game data uh, directly on the Solana chain. So it's gonna be really exciting. And the last video we already put um, the app in the WebGL browser. So now I can here connect with Phantom. Um, I connect and then I can click this level up button here, which will create a token account. Ah, oh, first uh, looks like the airdrop didn't go through. Um, well, that's something we need to fix later. So <laughs> first we connect again. So now we have one soul. And now if I click the level up button, it opens the transaction. And it costs 0 0.00094 sol, which is the cost that it costs to create the account for the program that, uh, that I wrote. So now we approve this. It creates an account. And then we save the current level of the player in there. So you can see we have 15 signatures so far. And when these are through, then we get the new uh, token account info. And then the player level here will go to 1. So that worked. But um, yeah, how did we get there? So if you don't have any uh, experience with smart contracts on Solana yet, I would recommend you to watch this video, the Solana Hello World program by Josh Devbox, because it's really good. That's what I did. I watched the video and then I deployed my first smart contract. So if you have done this, then we will now look at the code of the Hello World example. Um, it's basically the program I wrote is basically the Hello World example. I just called it Level Up and I changed a few strings. So that's about it. So here in the source, you can see the client, uh, the program in C and the program in Rust. So first we go to the program in Rust and uh, look at it a little bit. So the most important thing here is the greeting account, which um, has like one unsigned integer in it, which is the counter. For us, it will be the level. And um, yeah, it's very important that we know what this account, account here has because um, the size of the account um, defines how much the account creation will cost. That was the 0 0.00092 sol, which is basically 4 byte uh, in Solana cost, basically. And to figure out how much it costs, is um, we look up at the data type. So we see that an int is 4 bytes and goes from minus 2 billion to plus 2 billion. And if it's unsigned, then it will also have four bytes, but it goes from zero to 4.3 billion. And yeah, then I looked in Rust and in Rust, you can also see that an unsigned integer is 32-bit, um, which is four byte. And how does this look uh, on chain is um, we just go to the Solana Explorer, put in the wallet address that we just interacted with. And we can see that we have um, two instructions, here, two uh, transactions here. The first one is the one that created the token account. Um, now basically, it's not a token account, the program account, the associated program account. And you can see post village, I still have uh, one sol. And here we can see the instructions. So. Oh, no, wait, this is the airdrop. <laughs> so it was a bit confusing. So um, the first trans transaction has two instructions. The first one is creating the account with a seed. So the seed is Hello World that we will see later. Here you can see the cost and here's the size. So four bytes because it's one unsigned int. And one unsigned int costs 0 0.00091 sol. So back in the Rust code now, we can see that um, we can call this program with three parameters. Um, one is the program ID, which is the ID where we deployed the, project, the program, which is this one here. So I just deployed it. Solana program deploy, hello world. And then we have this program ID. So this one we need to pass in. Then we need to put in the accounts. In our case, it will be the token account for this program the account for this program. And then the instruction data will be nothing because the, pro uh, the program doesn't take any inputs currently. And then here, the next important thing is 
it gets the greeting account that is linked to the account that we created and increases the counter, so the unsigned int, by one, then serializes this again and then we exit. So and next we're going to look at the client because the client is what we will need to replicate in our C sharp program now. So basically what we're going to do is we take this part here and build the same thing in C sharp. So first we need to establish a connection, then we establish the payer, then we check if the program is deployed. So if there is if this account here exists, basically the one that we deployed, then we say hello, which means we build a transaction to increase the counter in this program. And then we report the greetings. So basically what that means is we get the token account info again and then show it in the top left corner. So how we do that? So we go to our C sharp code. Um, first of all, I created the account like it would be in Rust. So it's an unsigned int, the current player level, and the account size which is the object to byte array from an unsigned int dot length. So this gives us um, a byte array of an unsigned int and then the length. And this should return 4. I could have also hard coded 4, but maybe later uh, for the next example we will add some more data here. And then we will can just um, add them all together in the get account size. Okay, so what was the next thing we needed to do? Establish connection. So let's see what it does. It gets an RPC, gets a connection. Okay, so that we probably don't need because we already have a wallet and the wallet has an active RPC connection in it. So we go to the next step. Establish the payer. So for establishing payer, let me try to make this a bit bigger. No, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. oh, so now it's a bit, bit easier to read for you maybe. Let's try one more. So establishing the payer means we get the uh, recent block hash from our RPC connection. Then we calculate how much we need to pay for our account, which is four bytes. So to see exactly what's happening there, I wrote this in C sharp to see exactly the cost that we need to pay and see if it fits also to the smart contract, how much it costs. So I connect here. And then we can see here, I call active RPC, get minimum balance for rent exemptions of the account, hello world account size. And we can see that it returns us where's the result? No, no, nice. Um, start again. <laughs> ah, we didn't await it. Okay, so that was the problem. So let's go back. Otherwise, it just goes over it, of course. <laughs> and then we don't see the result. Okay, just restart. connect and now we can see the result is unsigned long and the result is uh, 1,273,000 Lamparts. Okay, good that we did this because the account size here is 55 but it should be 4. So apparently the function we were using before was wrong. The object to byte array does not return the right thing. It uses a byte formatter and then serializes it. And what we need is this. We need byte level, current level to byte array, and it needs to be a little endian. So that means that it counts the bits basically from the left and not the right. But I will explain more on how this works later. Okay, let's try again. Now it should work. Okay, we connect and you can see now the account size is four and the result is yeah so this looks way better 
copy value. Uh, let's check here on our LAMP port to SOL converter. Ah, yeah, here, 0 0.000912. So it's exactly the cost that we paid for our account. Okay, so now we continue. So we first get the size of the account <clears throat> and then we calculate the Lampard's forest signature times 100. So I just do the same thing in C sharp, um, which is exactly here. So we take the Lampard's per signature times 100 and then if the account, if you don't have an account yet, then we also add the cost that we just calculated before and add it to the fees. Then we check if the player has enough Solana to pay for the fees and if not we request an airdrop. This of course only doesn't uh, only works on DevNet but um, yeah on mainnet uh, we know need to show the player then uh, some kind of pop-up that he needs more soul to pay for the transactions. So what they actually did wrong in the example is that they always take the fees also for creating the account into account here and um, we don't need this when the account is already there because then we just need to increase it so that's why i added this check that if the account is already there we add the fees not and otherwise we add the fees um, but how do we get the world uh, the account data for that for the first thing we need to do is we need to get the address of this account and for that we need to derive a new public key for the account that we want to create from the hello world program id an account seed and the public key and when we do this we always get the same account for our program derived from this wallet the benefit of that is that we always know the account address basically if we have the public key and the program so we always know if there is an account already or not and we don't need to get all the accounts and loop through them for example and in the explorer this looks exactly like this so we have um, the seed here hello world we have the program which is the system program that creates the accounts and we have the assigned program id and we have the allocated bytes of four and the second instruction here is well, the first one is creating account with seed and the second one is with unknown program which is our hello world program that we created and the first um, parameter here is the program the second is a writable account which is the account that we created before so this new address here from the top is the one that we interact here in the second instruction of the of the transaction and the third one is the signer, which is our public key, our wallet. So now that we have the uh, address of the new account that we created, which we derived from the public key and the program ID, we can use this account uh, address to get the account info. So that we do here. We get the program derived account and then we get the program account public key. And then what we do with that is we get the account info of this account and yeah if it's not null and so on then we get the data here and we quickly gonna debug through that. so now we're here in the account info of this account that we created for our hello world program and it should have the data of level one in there because we called it one time so let's see what the data says so the data says it's base 48 encoded and the data is I A A A A A equal equal. And now you might think like why what is that? And for that there is a nice online tool that you can use if you have problems with something like this. Um it's called Crypti. I don't know, I found it online by Googling, so how I can easily visualize this. So here we put in the text, which is our base 64 encoded string and then it gets transferred into bytes and this is the thing where you might find find it weird because usually if you have a binary code you see the bits starting from the right so so if i take these bytes and i want to know what number they result into i can for example put them into this online tool here 
and we can see the number is very very big so it doesn't really make sense right but then you also notice that when you just take the first part like the only the first byte and you convert it then it re uh, results into 32 but it should be one so <laughs> the trick behind it is that it's um, that it's encoded as little endian which means that all the all the bits are counted from the left and not the right uh, don't ask me exactly why it's like this but um, the calculation is a bit faster if you start the bits from the left for some processor instructions or something but um, so now we put this in here we know that it's an unsigned integer okay i was confused why it doesn't show one and i thought i'm off by one or something but uh, then my editor wallet already is at level 32. Okay, so it actually works. Um, so I can put the data in here. It gets converted into base 64. Then we have the little Indian binary format here. And then we encode it into a 32-bit unsigned integer, and we get 32. And exactly the same thing we're also going to do um, in C Sharp. So I start the game. You can see I'm level 32 already in my uh, unity wallet so and now we are here we see this is the data we convert the bytes so the first byte is 32 um, so it's four byte it's exactly again the um, the size that we had in the account we convert it into an unsigned int it's 32 and then we can log a message that the player level is now 32 and then we also show a little blimp on the screen and we save it Okay, so the next thing we need to do in our list is now that we established the payer and got the, the airdrop and paid for the fees, we need to check if the program is deployed. And how they do this here is they just create the key pair from file and I don't know what are they even doing. Ah, no, this is just getting the key pair. And then they get the account info and if the account info is not null, then the program exists. So we're going to do exactly the same in Unity. Um, here, check if program is deployed. So we go in here, we get our hello world program public key. So it is a constant, so I just save it here. And you need to know it, uh, which, with which program you want to interact with. And then when it's not null, then we lock this. And um, if it is null, we return false and say, hey, the program is probably not deployed. But we know that it's deployed because we deployed it ourselves. But um, it's good to check anyway. Um, then we get here the program derived account again. It's the same thing. Like we put in the program ID, the seed. In this case, it's a string, hello world, and the public key of our wallet. And it will always result in the same thing. This will always be the address that is associated to our program for this public key. So now that we have this, we can create our transaction that we then send to Phantom. So first we need to create at the fee payer. The fee payer will be our public key, so our wallet. Then the recent block hash we got before already. We can just get it from the RPC. Then we need to create an empty signature list here because um, our transaction gets sig signed by the Phantom wallet. So we just send an unsigned transaction there and Phantom signs it and sends it off. Then we create the inst Instructions and then here we have this check again if the account already exists So the account for our program the hello world program account with the unsigned int that saves the player level If it doesn't exist, then we create this instruction here And as we do before we then call the program So it's basically just create account with seed from the system program, but it has a few more parameters so um, the from public key is our local public key, our wallet. Then the to public key in this case is the program account public key, so our program ID. Then the base account is our uh, our public our public key from our wallet because that's the one that we want to associate the new account with. Then the account seed is hello world again. Then the lamports is the result of the get minimum balance for rent exemption. That's the thing we did earlier. That was the 0 0.0009 sol. Then the space is 4. Here I could actually calculate it. 
because we know already. So it's actually a bit nicer to do it like this. So then later we don't have to we don't have to calculate it again. So this should actually not return an int, but it should return an unsigned long. Now that we can do. Just return oolong here. And then we just cast this to an oolong. Okay, and then the owner will be the program. So our hello world program public key. Then we add this instruction and then we go to adding the accounts, the accounts to the instruction. That will be um, the program public key, which is not the signer. So signer is false and it is writable. So that is the account that we want to change. That's why it needs to be writable. It's very important in Solana that you always tell Solana which accounts are writable and which are read only because it's very important for the performance of the blockchain that it knows which account it needs to block when you do a transaction because you can only do one transaction at an account at the same time. So, and if the blockchain has this knowledge, then it can parallelize way better. And then we have uh, read only our local public key, which will be the signer of this transaction. So it will also pay for the fees. Then we create the hello world instruction. That's the one that we sent to the program, which will increase the counter by one. So for that, we take again the public key of the program, the program ID and encode it as base, 60, base 58. Then we put the accounts here, the program public account and our wallet account. And for data, we put nothing, which is exactly what you saw here. So we are already in the next one. So we put the keys. Here it's the same. It's the greeted pub key, sign up false, writable false. And the program ID and no data. So it's exactly the same thing we do here. We put the keys, the program ID and the data. Then we add this instruction. Then we do some logging and then we sign and send the transaction. And um, since we have a phantom wallet, it on mobile it will create a deep link to the phantom wallet and in the browser it will open the browser extension and then we just check the result in the end so the check signature it's in the program they don't do that but it's basically just a coroutine that um, checks every few seconds how many confirmations are already uh, on this signature and then in the end shows that it's finalized. Which is uh, what is important here is that you can't use, um, like I created a coroutine because you can't use task.delay because it doesn't work in WebGL. Like it just crashes sometimes randomly or freezes. And so I did this little workaround here where I just create a coroutine and then I create this task and then in the coroutine I yield it until the task is complete. So it's basically the same thing, but it works in WebGL, which is nice. Okay, um, yeah, back to the back to the app. Um, yeah, let's increase the level once more, just to see that it works. Yeah. So now we're gonna be level thirty-three already, and then. Yeah, we can also put the data one more time in the converter to see if it's still working this time, maybe. Get Hello World account data, so I put the breakpoint here. I refresh the level, and now we see it's 1QAAA. So this should now result into 33. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Um, if you enjoy these uh, deep dives into the code, please let me know. Subscribe and like and ask your questions below. And try out the um, open source example. And Yeah, so always everything is uh, open source here in this repository. Um, there's also a pull request open to the Unity SDK where I submitted the deep links. And yeah, you can look at that, try it out, deploy it on iOS, Android, WebGL, and yeah.
Yeah, but it's some cool games.